When it comes to relationships and marriage, it's a brand new day, especially with uh, the ever emerging different technologies out there. That's right. So it's a question for folks say on Facebook, if you're in touch uh, with maybe an old boyfriend or old girlfriend, is that cheating? because you're not physically in touch. But we thought we wanted to ask Dr. Patty Ann Tublin, who's a renowned therapist. You've seen her many times on Live at Nine. A lot of people, Dr. Patty Ann, may not consider that cheating because you might be in different cities, you're not having a physical affair. Is it cheating on your spouse or your loved one? Just contacting and connecting with somebody is not cheating in and of itself. However, it depends upon the extent to which the contact goes. So if you start to share emotional confidences with a partner on Facebook, I'm sorry, with a friend on Facebook that you would normally share with your partner, that's... I would say that that's cheating. Okay. Can it, though, Dr. B, just as devastating, though, even though some people may try to justify it, oh, this is just, it's only Facebook. Mm. You know, it's not, we're not seeing each other face to face or anything like that, but uh, the impact of it, can it be just as devastating? It's absolutely just as devastating, and I've worked with couples where they've experienced both types of infidelity, sexual infidelity, and this new emerging emotional infidelity with technology, and I will tell you, it is just as devastating. Wow. Because because what happens is it is still a breach of trust. Mm -hmm. Here's the benchmark for whether your contact through Facebook or Twitter or whatever the means are today, if it's cheating or not. If somebody took their flip camera and videoed the interaction or downloaded the transcription of the IMing or whatever the written word is, if you do not want your significant other to view that or to read that, you're cheating. Oh, it's okay. pretty, it, it makes it pretty clear. Yes, it absolutely does make it clear. What about to, let's, let's take it away from cheating for just a minute, to developing relationships like that on Facebook or online. Or is it a real relationship? Because you may be a totally different person um, on in that venue. Does that make sense? You, so separate from the infidelity issue, yeah, just technology's just, influence just, on relationships? Yeah. Since it seems like you can almost assume a totally different right. identity here, can you? Absolutely, and yes, and people do it all the time. So what happens is you present yourself on Facebook more than your best foot forward. You present yourself as you want to be presented or as you want to be seen. You can and kind we of all create a persona. Right, and we all know people's reality might be eons apart from who in fact they are. Mm -hmm. right. You know, their perception of who they are versus who they really are. So what happens is people start dating and contacting and connecting on Facebook or any social media, and then they actually meet, and then you come to find out this guy or this gal is nothing like the way she presented herself. Even the picture that she puts up or he puts up might be something that was 10, 10 or 10 20 years, years ago. <laughs> I've been yeah, that, that could lead to, to some disappointment. There. So what should one do uh, in, in a circumstance like that? I mean, is there something I need to keep in mind if I'm about to meet this person or reconnect with somebody I haven't seen in maybe 10 years, uh, if not longer? Or? Sure. The word is caution. Just like when you meet somebody, even when you would go on an old school blind date and you'd mm -hmm. meet somebody at... Well, they didn't have Dunkin' Donuts old school or Starbucks old school. <laughs> you know what you would tell somebody? Meet somebody in a public place. Let people know where you'll be. And just in terms of a safety factor, because it is a real consideration for young women. There's so many mm -hmm. stories that have been in the media mm -hmm. about young women, or not so young women, going to meet people that they met online that they think they know. And there's a false sense of security that, oh no, I really know this person. Right. I've been Facebooking them for six months. Right. No way, you don't know them at all. And if anything, you might be deliberately being set up. Yeah. To, to be sucked into that false sense. But if even if not deliberately set up, you may have, you know, let's face it, if we're if we're interacting or conversing on Facebook, you have time to gather your thoughts, you have time to present yourself how you want to be presented, whereas in an ordinary conversation, you're more yourself. So you might not really know this person at all. Absolutely. I mean, you know, those ad lib lines were well rehearsed. Right. right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So and I've worked with countless people and you know the person said Sounds like Prince Charming online, and then you meet him, and you're like, <laughs> this is a dragon slayer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be cautious and do your due diligence. Meaning, spend time with somebody in little increments and get to know them. Social.
social media is a great way to have access to people that you would never otherwise connect with. And that is awesome. But other than that, caution reigns supreme because you don't really know this person other than how they want to present themselves. And doctor, this caution isn't just needed for younger people who a lot of us may naturally assume are using social media like Facebook, but older adults as well. There are a lot of folks in their 50s, 60s, and 70s who are also kind of reconnecting mm -hmm. through Facebook mm -hmm. these days. And in a way, that's really awesome. Right. Some widow and widowers um, will hook up with people, you know, through Facebook that they never would have reconnected with. And that that can be really cool. I mean, I think that's awesome. Right. So you're not alone in your older years. But again, you have to be cautious because that person that you knew when they were 20 or 30 might not necessarily be the same person that they are later. Nobody's who we were when we were 20 or 30. Mm -hmm. And is it is it polite? Is it kind? Is it acceptable? If someone is contacting you, you begin to think it's getting a little over the line, maybe an old boyfriend or girlfriend who's just very persistent, to just ignore? Is that okay? Or do you have to say, you know what, I really think we need to cut off communication? Well, you started to engage them, and uh, then you feel you know, like they're Yeah, you reconnected, but then it the keeps up, 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 up. Um, I think what you would do is, and I actually had a, a similar situation like this with somebody I was working with. Um, I think you say, you know, I'm very happily married. Um, you know, I would really like to just keep this platonic and friendly, but I get the feeling you want a little bit more than that, so even though that's not what it. you say. Okay. Even though you, that's, okay. And then you might need to deject or reject or whatever button it is. <laughs> defriend, defriend. Yeah, defriend. Yeah. And then delete them for and sure. Delete. Right. Get them out of there. All right. Thank Doctor, you so, so much. so much good advice as always. You're and you welcome. can find great Dr. Patty Ann online because she has some great tidbits to help us that all. That she does. All right. We're going to take a short break. More News Channel 3 Live at 9 in just a moment.